Hey everybody, welcome back to Habitats at Home, the home of Doc Merton. In this video I just wanted to show you the new extension that I threw together for Doc's enclosure. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed as Doc's got older is that she was digging a lot more in the little uh, substrate well that I had in there. And for a long time I've been wanting to provide her a little bit more extra space to dig. Uh, but now that I'm in our new place and we've got this big room, I've, I've got the space to do it. So this this was actually Turbo's first enclosure that I built. It's a 4x2x2, by two by two, which is 1200 by 600 by 600 But I made a few adjustments. I, I, I made the substrate dam or this front rail um, a lot higher. It's around about, oh, it's just shy of a foot or, or, or 300 mil high. I changed this top rail to make it shorter. Um, we've only got a very small sort of access in here, but that's by design, obviously, to give her the most amount of um, substrate as possible and also a little bit of privacy. I want this sort of area to be a bit of a, a sanctuary for Doc, a bit of a hideaway. If she's in there, like, I don't want to bother her. It's just to give her a spot to sort of bunker down if she wants to. And the glass in here, um, I have actually, actually don't have glass for it just yet. I've just got two bits of 5mm perspex. I've even left the um, plastic on it just so it's a bit more um, opaque. I'm kind of thinking I might tint the glass here or keep it opaque or, or, or something. I, I don't want, essentially I want to be able to see what she's doing in there but I don't want to have full view of what's going on outside because I want her to feel safe. Um, Turbo's new enclosure is actually below and I'm still not 100% sure how it's going to do with the weight of this. And so if that doesn't work out then I will obviously have to redesign this. So you'll see there the hole that I've cut through to the Doc's other enclosure. I wanted to make this small. I wanted to, her to feel like she was going sort of in through a log or into a, a tight space that then that then opens up. I've waterproofed it to obviously hold the moisture of the substrate. Uh, rock wall is universal rocks. Um, I've made this sort of heat tile here out of heat cord. Most likely I will not actually use this. I don't heat any of my animals at night. It doesn't get cold enough in my room or even cold enough uh, where I live, where it's really necessary. It's important to let your, your animals cool down. I tend to bake them during the day and, and, and no heat at night. So I'm just gonna put it in there because it's gonna be a lot easier if for some reason that I do decide that I need night heating or I wanna warm the substrate. It's much easier to put it in now rather than take all the substrate out and put it in later. So um, it's a case of having it and not needing it rather than needing it and not having it. Lighting in here is pretty simple, just an LED, nothing too crazy in here. Literally just a box to hold dirt. So the other thing is is the substrate. Uh, we're gonna make the substrate today. I'll show you how I do it. You'll see the substrate down in Turbo's enclosure is a mix of um, cocoa fiber and red Darwin sand. Dock substrate is gonna be more uh, garden soil, sand and cocoa fiber. So um, yeah, I'll show you how we make that. All right, so to make this mix here, we're using cocoa fiber, which I've already got. Now you buy this in like a brick and you add water and it starts to separate and it actually expands slightly. And the cocoa fiber is very, very good at holding moisture. The other thing we're gonna use is just washed uh, play sand and um, some organic garden soil and we're just gonna mix it all together. The thing about this sort of stuff is try not to overthink it too much, but we're gonna give it basically 10% sand, 20% uh, cocoa fiber and 70% garden soil. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, test its consistency and whether it can hold a burrow and then go from there. So you, you, it's also important to have a little bit of water, you need it to be a little bit damp and then the, all the ingredients will bind together and create a nice um, substrate that, that Doc can burrow into and it'll hold the burrows as well. So I'm just adding in my sand, I'm going to give it like a good layer across everything. So once we've got all of that in there, just a bit of water, and then we'll mix up. So the cocoa fiber that was on the bottom, we need to make sure that we're scooping down really low and bringing that up to the top. Once 
quite often when you're getting these bags from your gardening store or whatever, like a lot of stuff gets mixed in. Um, so if there's any like anything like that, that kind of just looks like an old potato or something, but you actually break it up and it's just dirt. So just make sure you're checking anything, any sort of weird sort of objects or foreign objects or quite often you get like sticks and sticks won't really matter, but bits of plastic and stuff like that, you wanna make sure you're taking all of that stuff out. All right, so that's pretty well mixed in now. And now what we wanna check is that if it's gonna hold a burrow. So if we can press that down, So you can see there that that's really going to hold a burrow for Doc. You know, my hand's all the way in there, so. Um, maybe a little bit more moisture, um, and obviously a lot more compaction. This is going to do, do really well, so. It's quite good. Now obviously you can see that this tub is not the same size as the digging enclosure, so I'm going to have to make a few of these tubs, but I just wanted to show you how uh, it's done. Okay, so now that our substrate's all mixed up, I'm just going to use this dust pan to carefully um, shovel it in. Like I said, one thing I am worried about is whether um, Turbo's enclosure is gonna be able to hold the weight of all the substrate. Um, so as I'm putting it in, I'm just gonna keep checking the doors, where the doors keep opening and shutting, because that's gonna be the main sign that there's a lot of weight being pushed down on top, is that generally your um, the top rail of the enclosure below will start to bow and pinch the uh, glass doors. So let's get started. As you're shoveling substrate in, you want to make sure you're getting into all the corners and as you go, you want to be compacting. It's, it's a lot easier to compact the substrate as you go rather than try and compact it at the top, especially when you've got such a, a thick layer. Hey, I figured while I'm filling this up, you guys can just watch Doc for a bit. How about that? Okay, so the substrate's all filled up. I ended up using uh, two of the mixes I showed you and then I chucked two bags of straight garden soil straight on top just to make up the rest and then I sort of just mixed it in a bit and then compressed it. I did want to fill it up a little bit more but uh, just looking at the enclosure below, the, the, the doors still open and close fine but um, I'm not comfortable putting any more uh, substrate in, in on this at the moment. It's carrying quite enough weight already and this is fine. There's there's a good 250 mil of substrate in there already. Now, the last thing we gotta do is that Doc hasn't actually really explored in here just yet. I'm hoping the smell and stuff of, of what's going on in here is gonna entice you to come in through this hole and use it. But just to get her started, I think I'm gonna um, try and get her in with just a little bit of food and um, see how that goes. Okay, so armed with our trusty bucket and net, we're gonna try and find a yabby for Doc to eat. I don't have too many in here at the moment. I need to um, make an order. I didn't want to move hundreds of yabbies uh, when I moved house, so I fed a lot of them off and only moved with a few. That looks like a good one. In the bucket. 
let's go. Okay, so I've got this set up like this, kind of like on a split between the two enclosures. And hopefully we can see her uh, go through and eat the yabby on this side. I don't really want to reinforce that there's going to be food over here, but just for the first time, just to get her used to it, I think it's okay. So I'm going to slip this through this side to get her attention. And then you're going to see her make a dash across here in a minute. Here she comes. And there we go. Success. And a mouthful of dirt for her troubles. Well, she's certainly not used to the dirt. All right, so what we learned was that she was quick to use the hole, but we definitely do not want to be feeding her uh, over on this side with all the dirt. The little bit of dirt's not going to harm her. Um, I don't want her taking a mouthful of, of soil every time she eats, and we'll keep to the uh, the water side. And hopefully she works out that she can come through here and, and dig any time she likes. Alright guys, as you can see, Doc's still exploring around in there, and you can see what I mean by that opaque uh, of the plastic. I can see what she's doing, but she can't see me. Now, you're probably wondering, like, will I make that substrate bioactive? And while, well, the answer is no, essentially. Um, while there are sort of um, natural organism, uh, organisms that come with the organic soil, you know, as I was mixing it through, there are little springtails and, and things like that in there. Um, the reality is that, uh, looks like she's going to go the long way around. The reality is that a true bioactive system actually needs plants. Um, even, even insects produce waste. And when you have a system that, that doesn't have plants, your, your microorganisms are, are, are making waste as well. And they will actually make your soil go bad over a long period of time. So you really do need plants in there to, um, to complete that cycle. While I, I do have springtails, I could add some springtails uh, spring in there and I do have some worms. It's really, it's really not that necessary. If she starts using this as a bathroom and things like that, I, I'm gonna have to replace the soil at some point anyway. So this is a bit of an experiment for me. Um, see how she uses it, see how she goes. She might not use it at all. So I really hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you're ever trying to mix substrate um, for yourself, uh, and you know, please like, uh, subscribe, and, and comment down below if you've got any questions um, about anything that you've seen or, or about anything else. Really, I'm now looking for ideas for more YouTube videos. So, if you have anything that you want to see or anything you want to know about, um, drop it down below, and um, I'll get to it. So, I um, hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much.